Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. And since it's a Saturday, I just have a handful of items for you. But I wanted to let you know, and, and of course I'll put the links in the description so that you can go there. Uh, but this first one is, on Friday, 5,000 more hours of January 6th CCTV footage was released, and it's on Rumble. And you'll get the uh, link when I put it up in the description. It'll have the link to the Rumble channel. Turns out the House Oversight Committee actually has a Rumble channel where they're releasing all these videos. And I think that's a great thing because then they can be crowdsourced and people can find out whatever needs to be found out about the truth of what took place on January 6th. Either there'll be proof that these people were committing uh, crimes or that there will not be proof of it and we'll be able to see that. So that's the first item. The second item is an appeals court has overturned the January 6, uh, one January 6 defendant's sentence. Not his entire sentence. He's still uh, guilty of a couple of felonies. But in what I would call piling on, the government was stacking extra offenses on top of people to give them more prison time. And it turns out that the court has said, no, the law you're trying to apply does not apply here. And therefore, you cannot put use this in their sentencing. So that means that the sentence for this particular defendant will be shorter. It also means that other defendants who've already been com uh, convicted may be able to get shortened sentences. And people who have not been convicted at all and are only charged with this offense won't be charged at all. They'll have to drop the charges. So this could have far-reaching uh, impact on the various people that were involved in, in the January 6th situation. So again, those links will be in the, in the description for you to see. And now I want to show you a video. Uh, this is a, a small portion of the uh, Fonnie Willis disqualification hearing. On Friday, the lawyers presented their arguments. And this particular lawyer is named Steve Sadow. He's Donald Trump's lawyer. And he makes some interesting points, which the judge responds to. And I want you to hear the judge's response and then I'm going to talk about it because it's, it's to me at least, it's a big deal. Of Bradley. And take that on its face, face value, that that is an indication that Bradley in fact knew and had said he did. If you accept that, you have to have concerns about the truthfulness of Willis and Wade on the timing issue. And I don't know if this is something maybe one of your co-counsel were going to address as well. We heard about kind of the law that applies how we're, we're outside kind of the orbit of, of the core of cases we're used to dealing with here where it deals with side switching or uh, where someone is in the uh, relationship, the client relationship. The proposition you're putting forward now is that if a representative of the state, the lead prosecutor, the district attorney themselves, um, says something that's untruthful on the record, that is something that immediately has to be proactively policed by the trial court? Is basically what I'm getting at is, where in the law do we find the remedy to an untruthful statement? Generally, we send you down the street to the bar, right? And that's why I gave you the cases of Registe and Edwards yesterday. While those aren't prosecutorial cases or dealing with prosecutors, they deal with counsel. And in both those cases, the trial judge found ethical violations on the part of <clears throat> defense counsel or potential ethical violations went through the ethical violations and said based on that you're disqualified you cannot be the attorney of record in this case what's good for the goose is good for the gander if defense counsel can be kicked off of a case because of ethical violations I suggest the same thing can happen for prosecutors when the ethical violations deal with truthfulness candor to the court extrajudicial statements uh, those are the things that this court can rely upon and say, based on those, again, I find an appearance of impropriety. Where, where would be the limiting principle? Uh, the district attorney signs every indictment assigned to this courtroom. No. Does that mean this is important. She's off every case. No, it would be when the... If I found that she's untruthful, is that what you're... 
Democrat Julie Johnson is a Texas trailblazer. In the State House, Julie Johnson championed gun. Kind of suggesting that. You don't have to find, again, I'm not saying you have to find she was untruthful or that Wade was untruthful. You don't have to make a finding of fact that they lied. All you have to do is make a finding of fact that you have genuine, legitimate concerns about their credibility, about their truthfulness. And once you find that, then you can apply Registe and, and uh, Edwards. Well, but it's the same principle, though. If I have genuine concerns about her truthfulness on a particular occasion, how do those not spill over into every criminal case a district attorney? Bam. Think about this. What the judge is saying is that if I find that the district attorney was not truthful in this case, how does that not spill over to all her other cases? In other words, every case that Fonnie Willis has tried or is currently trying in her office would be in question. And I think whether or not the judge finds in this case that they are to be disqualified has, is, has, has zero impact on that. Defense, you know how attorneys are. They're like sharks in the water. When they smell blood, they go for it. And they're going to smell blood with this. They're going to say, okay, I'm sniffing through this case and I'm going to find anything I can find to show that she was less than truthful. And if I can find something, she gets thrown off the case, my, my uh, client gets a new trial, or uh, the, trial, he, he, the trial is dropped, the case is dropped. So there's got to be some some people some higher ups in the background there in fulton county that right now are just going oh my god you gotta be kidding me oh my god i can't believe the mess she has created i guarantee you there's going to be a lot of ill will towards her now because this is a similar situation to when um, the courts find that a uh, coroner has lied in testimony in the court. It brings into question every single case the coroner has been in. Same thing applies to a lying attorney general. So <laughs> this this is a mess. This is this is a horrible mess. It's gonna take years to clean it up and there's gonna be a lot of bitterness and ill feelings towards Fonnie Wade because of Willis because of it. Because she she's the one who made her bed and now she's got a lie in it. And so I just thought that was interesting and I thought I'd point that out to you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was uh, I, I do keep track of the Colorado Buffalo football team. And uh, particularly uh, Coach Prime. Darius here. Deion Sanders. Uh, he puts the reason why I do is because I've always admired him for his positivity and his, his uh, outspoken Christianity. And so I keep close track on the Colorado team. During the season, I will do a handful of videos about their games. I, I don't track them all the time like some people do, but I do occasionally make videos about them. But I wanted to point this one out to you because Deion Sanders is actually teaching a college class now on media. So he has obtained the title of Professor Prime along with all his other titles. And this particular channel is called Reach the People Media. Uh, I'll put the link in the description and you can subscribe to it if you want or just watch this one video if you're interested in that. But I wanted to point that out to you because I, I just think it's interesting. And like I say, I, I really appreciate uh, Deion Sanders' stand on Christianity and his willingness to be bold about it. So that's the news for the day. And as for you, my viewers, I'm thankful that you're here. I'm very thankful. And I pray for you. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.